Sister, please. In Islam, right, we have hadith which is interpret, interpreted by different imams. And this um, led to confusion because some of my friends asked, like, um, if we have different hadith, right, and some of them are different, as in, you know, like, like one imam said that when we take the wudu, um, at least three st strands of hair, and while others that, you know, the whole head, right, um, okay, some of them said that we are indecisive, as in, we, undecisive, as in, we cannot come up with one hadith. What can we say about this? And, okay, another question is that um, my teacher said something about that God is cruel because um, Habil and Kobil, right, because um, they had an argument and one of them killed one. Okay, so how can I correct my teacher as she said something like God is cruel because of this act? Okay. This is the first question was that there are different mazhabs and that covers my 17 common questions. I said why there are so many sects, etc. Regarding your question that whether the hair should be completely uh, by wudu, etc. Why are they different? Why can't they one hadith? Sister, in following the hadith, first check up the authenticity of the hadith. If it is sahih, you have to follow. If it is zaif, you don't have to follow. There are sahih hadith, zaif hadith, and mawzu hadith. If it's a sahih, you have to follow. If it's not a sahih, you don't have to follow. No two sahih hadith will contradict. And there are the signs of hadith, which you have to go through years of studies and how to analyze that. Regarding difference of madhabs, you said, just asked the question, what are the difference of madhab, which madhab to follow? Is that a question? You start the question, which madhab to follow? You know, there are various things. And the answer is given in the glorious Quran. In Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 103, which says, Wa taseemu bi hablillahi jamiyo wala tafarku. Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. Which is the rope of Allah? This. Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. Hold to the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith and be not divided. It is forbidden for the Muslims to be divided amongst ourselves. And the glorious Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 159, that anyone who divides the religion and breaks it into sects, you have nothing to do with them. Allah is the Prophet, you have nothing to do with them. Allah will look after their affairs and He will tell them the truth in the end. That means dividing the religion of Islam into sects is haram in Islam. But when you ask a person, what are you? Some person say I'm a Hanafi, some person say I'm a Shafi, some say I'm a Maliki, some say I'm a Deobandi, some say I'm a jamaat -e islami some say I'm a Varevli. What are the beloved prophets? Hanafi? Was he Shafi? Was he Deobandi? What was he? You are the Muslim! Quran says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3, verse 52, Isa alayhi salam was a Muslim. Quran says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3, verse 67, that Abraham, peace be upon him, was not a Jew or a Christian, he was a Muslim. Our beloved prophet was a Muslim. The Quran gives the answer in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 33. Woman Hasan Kala Mimman Da ila Lahi wa Amal Salihan Kala inna nimilal Muslim. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord? Works righteousness and says that I am a Muslim. I am the one who bows to the will of Islam. So if anyone poses the question, What are you? you should say I'm a Muslim. All these Imams, Alhamdulillah, I respect them all. They were great Imams. Imam Shafi, Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with them. Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, may Allah be pleased with them all. They were great scholars. I respect them. If someone follows their particular views, I've got no objection. You know, you, some person says Imam Shafi, may Allah be pleased with him, is right here. Imam Abu Hanifa is right here. Alhamdulillah, I've got no objection. But if someone asks you the question, what are you? You should say, I'm a Muslim. If you don't follow that, you're going against the Quran. You can't call yourself a Hanif, you are a Shaf, you are a Maliki. Just call yourself as a Muslim. You may agree with the views of foreign scholars. I've got no objection. But if the view of that scholar goes against the Quran and the Hadith, you have to reject that view. Let him be the greatest scholar in the world. If it goes against the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, you have to reject the view of that scholar. People may pose the question, you know what our beloved Prophet said? There will be 73 firqas, 73 sects. What do you have to say about that? There's a Hadith in uh, Abu Dawud mentioned, Hadith number 4579. It says that a beloved Prophet said that the religion of Islam will divide into 73 sects. A prophet said there will be 73 sects. He didn't say you should make 73 sects. There will be. He's predicting. That though the Quran says don't make sects, you Muslims are bound to make sects. And then the hadith we mentioned in Trimedi, hadith number 171, that a beloved prophet said there will be 73 sects in Islam. Out of that, only one will be on the true path. So the companion asked, which sect will be on the true path? The prophet said, that sect which follows me 
and my companions who follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. So if you are the Muslim sister, you should follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. If you have difference of opinion, this scholar says that, this scholar says that, if it matches with the Quran, you agree with that scholar. If it goes against the Quran, you reject that scholar. And most of the problem will be solved. The problem that we have today is because we don't read the Quran with understanding. If you read the Quran with understanding, most of the problem will be solved. Hope that answers the question. Regarding the second question, that the teacher said that Almighty God is cruel, one brother kills the other brother, the son of Adam kills the opponent. Sister, tell your teacher that God Almighty didn't tell one brother to kill the other brother. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any human being, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. Quran doesn't say if you kill a Muslim, any human being, Muslim or non-Muslim, if you kill any human being, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And if you save any human being, it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity. So Almighty God says you should not kill any human being, unless he's creating mischief, he's calling disturbance, he's trying to see to it that peace doesn't prevail. In that case, you can. Otherwise, you should not kill any living creature. That is just the story of a couple of brothers who killed each other. Allah didn't tell them to kill. And Allah is not cruel. Allah is merciful. He is just and even punishes those who require punishment. Hope that answers the question.